feel beautifully at the beginning. <laughs> right, but um, I think the last time we were here uh, working on New Conversations, I Am Meets Water, Peace with Arturo O'Farrell, I did 23 minutes in five days. It was just coming out, coming out, coming out. I think this is a, a different process. I tend to think it takes me two years to make a piece. And I usually think that's like from the idea and I walk into the studio, it takes me two years to get be able to walk into the studio. With this piece, I'm just letting it come. I feel like it, it deserves the time. Yeah, so I'm, I'm obeying and just taking the time, yeah. yeah. What does the piece mean? The equality of night and day. For me, it took me a minute to try to figure out what that means. And so for me, I think about twilight, when the sun is just about to set and there's this equal balance of sunlight and darkness. And for me, it feels like a peaceful place that quickly escapes. And so you're constantly trying to fight to find that. I think where it's sitting with me now is kind of this subtle, almost very short sweet spot where everything kind of feels serene and peaceful and coming from the extremes of what happens during the day or what happens at night, but really finding that middle ground where you can just release and exhale and let go. It's that time when the sun is fleeting. That is the equality of night and day for me. And I don't know, it makes me tense thinking about it and dancing and almost tearing up. <laughs> but it's like a tense, it's tense to me. So it's kind of like this underlining feeling of ten intensity, but it's very subtle and you're still calm because you have to still get up in the morning, go to work, do what you're supposed to do while all of this is happening. After I heard the title, The Equality of Night and Day, um, I looked at uh, some poems and stuff like that, and I found a Japanese poem and um, written by Mrs. Kaneko, and she described the night and day as a rope that connects, intertwined, and there is no end. So that uh, kind of inspired me to have something circle something together that we cannot separate. When I think of the equality of night and day, I think of equality. And I think of balance. And I think of this kind of time in your life and society when everything just feels right. We get to exist in it and celebrate it, but then we don't get to stay there. One of the things that the equality of night and day means to me is community. But the beginning step, we're holding something precious and we're looking down. The circle step of us just stepping around the person in the center, we are a community. We're just, it's about sticking together and pushing forward and moving forward as one. the quality of night and day, watching the rehearsal yesterday, I noticed there was a lot of moments where the dancers would just stand still. And I love that, and I think it's really genuine about Ron's work, is that it's like a sentence in a paragraph. So it's like, 
There'll be movement phrases, you know, and then stop so that we can just see the dancer and feel like a sense of stillness and peace. And so watching it yesterday, I was thinking, oh, that's what the quality of night and day is to me. Just this just a position of like being angry and not knowing what to do. And then like you have so much love, though. I mean, I tell the dancers and I confess all of this to, to the dancers that I am learning and discovering as I go, right? My favorite definition of confidence is, is I know nothing and I trust myself completely, right? And that's because I'm a faithful guy. And I just try and get to a space of obedience so I can learn from this thing that I feel um, is being kind of given to me and then I kind of create, improvise, but um, keep feeding myself so that I can understand more. Working on the equality of night and day, Ron has definitely taken many of us aside and worked on different phrases or um, really pushing us in different directions and seeing what comes out of him, but then also how that translates onto our bodies. And so that's been a really uh, fulfilling experience to have. Being here all these years, I've seen so many works being made. And I definitely think that the way the works were created and the outcome of these pieces were dependent on the dancers that were in the company at that time. I think one thing that a lot of people don't realize about when a choreographer is making work is how long it takes. So we have been sitting on this material for a good minute. Nothing new, just doing the steps that he has taught us. But when I'm building something like this, I tell everyone, you are actually casting yourself. And I, I said, there's two things that I'm looking at. Are you doing it? Can you do it? And so um, the apprentices who can do it will be in it. <laughs> and they're, show, they're showing up. In my however many years I've been with this company, <laughs> um, no, I've never seen apprentices get this amount of time with Ron and with the work. Um, so they're, they're getting it. They're getting it, absolutely. Because we have company class together and we take turns. I teach, Arcel teaches, Anik teaches. Then we have guest um, teachers. They had ballet with uh, Lena Commendador. And so then I can talk to them about how to apply what happened in company class to their work in rehearsal. I always say when you first come into this company, learning the work is like learning a foreign language. It's not like anything you've ever experienced fully. It might have a little piece of, of uh, West African, a little piece of Afro-Cuban, a little piece, and you may know a little bit of those pieces, but you've never put it together in this way before. So learning this work is like learning a foreign language. And at first, it just looks like a whole lot of um, just words you don't understand. But at some point, you stick with it. At some point, you start to learn the language and it starts to make sense. Um, and you start figuring out how to communicate with it. I love how he creates his movements. It looks like he's channeling um, spirits or ancestors through his body. He does a movement and then you go, if it felt right, he would just continue moving and if it didn't work or something wasn't right in his soul, he'd be like, no, 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 and then we'd do something else. It's just, I love seeing that. I'm, I'm in awe, I'm just, it's hard for me to dance because I'm just watching him. There's a beauty in the rawness of like, the way that we arrive at the materials through our unique experiences and our life, you know, challenges and our family stories that make their way into the work somehow. There's this unique meeting point where it's Ron's work and it's yourself and, it, and it's limitless. It, it's about me saying, how deep am I willing to go? How much am I willing to get into the work, as Ron says, which for me feels like, where can I take this? Am I open enough to 
to dive in and to, to be in that place of exploration that's unknown to me. When he asks us to bring, that's something I have to bring every day. I have to come into the space. What I have to present to you today is what I have. It's not forced, it's this is who I am today. This is all I can bring to you today. Now the pulling that he pulls out of us is, Shay, I know you can do more. Like, do it. I know you can do more. That's why I'm telling. That's why I'm giving you this step. That's why I'm pushing you to do this. Just do it. That pulling comes from, for me, the frustration in me. Like, why can't I do this? Like, why? Like, why is this so difficult? And then when you just do it, you're like, wow. I didn't even know that I can do this. History of Jacob's Pillow, just finding out that some of the buildings here and just this place was, you know, on the route of the Underground Railroad. Again, I grew up in Memphis. For me, we're one of the stops on the Underground Railroad. So to experience that and have this care and sacred is probably a word. Um, it gives me a different approach to adding to the space. Every attempt to move forward, access is denied. And I can't even imagine what that felt like for my parents, my grandparents, my great-grandparents, for my, my grandfather who came back from fighting in the war with this promise of being able to make a better life for his family, only to have it denied. When it comes to equal education, um, equal ho a fair chance at equal housing and getting a loan. Being able to have access to health care, the same kind of health care as other people, as white people, right? The same um, access to a pool, a beach. Like at every single turn, access was denied. And that, that level of tension, I think Ron is tapping into. And I think it's so beautiful and so, so powerful. I think inside of um, me talking to the dancers about all of the, the, the grief and the, the, the weight of everything that we feel, that I want us to find that joy and make sure that we, everyone understands that this is what is the destination in the word equality. That is the destination of this kind of serenity. Thank <laughs> you. 